Now, there's one other thing, and I believe it's in the notes that it's very important. The last uh, edition of this book left this off. The third thing they are going to check is the collateral that you as the borrower are going to pony up for the money you're borrowing. And how does the lender know that the house that you're using as collateral is the, of value? They hire the appraiser. All right. That's why we have mentioned before that the appraiser works for the lender. He does not work for the buyer. He may get paid by the buyer because the bank's going to say, you want to borrow my money? You need to prove to me that the house is worth this $250,000 I'm going to loan you. So they say, okay, and the bank hires an appraiser to go out and look at the collateral of the property. And the appraiser is going to come back and that house better appraise at least 250 and preferably more than 250 so that the lender has some cushion of security in there. All right. Are you getting what I'm saying? That person wants to borrow 250000 and they want to use the house as collateral. The lender hires an appraiser. The appraiser goes out. He comes back to the lender and says, hey, dude, that house is worth about $325,000. Sweet. What lender in the world wouldn't lend two hundred and fifty? dollars if they know their security collateral is worth 325. That's what they want. Now, there are situations that have happened where the borrower or the buyer goes to the lender and says, I want to borrow $250,000 to buy this property. And the lender checks them out and their credit score is good and their DTI is good. And they send the appraiser out and the appraiser comes back and goes, dude, that house is not in good shape. It's only worth 200000 The lender's going to say, time out. We are not going to loan you $250,000 on a piece of property that is only worth two hundred dollars because we are exposed. We are not given security even to the amount you borrow." That would kill a deal. You see that a lot where the house didn't appraise. It didn't appraise for the value. Yeah, the borrower's good, but the collateral is not good. Now, one other thing. A borrower can use any property as collateral for a loan. Most people think that I want to go buy a loan up here in Minnesota, buy a house in Minnesota, I only have one thing in my possession that's worth 250000 That is the house that I'm buying. So most people use that house as the collateral for the loan. But I'm here to tell you, let's say that person in Minnesota is buying a house for two hundred and fifty, but they have a free and clear condo in Miami that's worth $500,000. They can, in essence, use that house in Miami as the collateral for the loan for the house they want to buy in Minnesota. The bank would appraise which property? The one in Miami. And the bank is going to say, well, this is a no-brainer. The guy wants to borrow 250 on something that's worth 500 and we'll loan to him. If that guy gets in trouble with the payments, which house would the bank foreclose upon? The condo in Miami, because it was the collateral for the loan. The fact is, most of us only have that one item, that house in Minnesota. So that's why you see Oh, yeah, I use that house as the collateral for the loan. 
you could use any house if you had that ability to do that. All right, so let's move forward. So what you now have are a historical check, you have a current check, and you have the property to make sure that it's covered. So these are the three things that the lender's going to check. And I'm going to tell you, they are going to crawl up inside that consumer. If you're loaning 250000 or 400 or 800 to somebody, you're going to want to know everything about them. And this is where most of the loans fall through. Because somebody's going to go, well, yeah, I make 5000 5, a month. Now they have to prove it. So they submit all their taxes and stuff like that. And it turns out they only really make $4,850. They just rounded it up for conversation. Well, that's going to change things because now that all that math calculation is not done on 5,000, it's done on 4,850. And that might change something to the point where now one of those numbers falls outside and the lender goes, sorry, I can't loan to you. Or that, you know, other things. They maybe they've only had their job for two weeks. Oh, yeah, I'm making five grand a week or five grand a month. And you go, great. How long have you been on the job? Two weeks. You are going to find out that two years is the minimum that a lender wants because they want work stability. I'm not saying that person that's been on the job two weeks is a bad person. I'm just saying he hadn't been there long enough. And we can, this is where that line would get drawn about the nuances because that guy goes, well, I've been here two weeks, but this is the same job I've been doing for 20 years. I just got a better company. So I'm still the HR manager, only I'm now manager of B instead of A. And I was the HR manager making 60 grand a year for the last 10 years. And now it's just a new job. Well, the lender go, may go, okay, we'll overlook that because it's the same job. See how nuanced this could be? And that's where that line would be drawn. You might want to say, okay, I did the math at five grand. Now I'm going to turn you over to the mortgage broker who gets all up in your client and figures out these kind of things. Okay. <coughs> oh, the hazards I take to help you out. <coughs> Trying to work too fast. <laughs> and I was breathing coffee. That happens to me a lot because I'm helping you by trying to make this a quicker uh, speech, and I end up drowning myself every time. So excuse that quick interruption. All right, so let's move on. So when you go to borrow money, they're going to run this check on you, and you are going to see that... <clears throat> Here's the common structure of how this works. Here you are, and here the bank is. So you are going to ask for money. And the bank is going to give you money. You are going to sign two documents. This is another misconception that consumers, and maybe even you have, there are two documents that get signed because the bank has given you money. You are going to sign an IOU that promises to repay them. That is called the note or the financing instrument. And you are going to promise to repay that back to the bank. Now, the next question I ask, and I've touched on this once before, I usually ask people in class, how many of you have got a mortgage? And everybody raises their hand and say, well, I've got a mortgage. No, you actually don't. You actually have given a mortgage to the bank because the second document you will sign is the mortgage. And the mortgage is nothing more then a hypothecation, real big fancy word. Uh, yeah, it would help if I could spell it right. Hypothecation or a pledging 
of the document. You might see this if you have stocks and bonds, you can hypothecate them, meaning you pledge them as collateral. This is the one that is when I say you got to pledge the collateral for the loan, you got to give them something of value. And like in our last example, it could be that house in Minnesota, could be that house in Miami. All right. But the point being is that you have given the bank a mortgage and back to that OR and the EE. And you hear a lot of people go, well, this one's backwards. No, it's not. It's just that they don't understand that you don't get a mortgage. You give a mortgage. That makes you as the consumer, you as the borrower, you as the buyer of the property, the mortgage or the bank is the mortgage E. And I touched on that in a previous chapter. Do not mess that one up or you will miss a couple questions on the exam because you're going to have the parties backwards. It still holds true. The OR, the one doing the action, the borrower is the mortgage or they're the ones pledging the property to the bank. The bank is the one accepting this pledge that makes them the mortgagee. All right. So let's look at something here. See if I can do this. <clears throat> what do we got? Uh, sample note. That's the one I want to see. So the note or the financing instrument is what we are talking about. This is the IOU. So in this example, I borrowed $100,000. And the note is going to say clearly that the amount borrowed is $100,000. It's then going to talk about <clears throat> the interest rate and the payment. So the interest rate in this example is 5.31% at a 30 year fixed. We're going to explain that a little bit later. But basically what that means is I will pay $555.30 per month for the next 360 months. Why 360? This is the most common. That's 30 years, by the way. All right. And after I pay all that money back, I will actually pay back $200,000. So what I want you to see is what? How much am I going to pay back? Well, I'm going to pay back the principal of 100 and the interest of how much? 100. That's how much I paid back. I paid back 100 in the principal, which I borrowed, and I paid back 100 in interest because of this thing called the interest rate. The interest rate is the amount of money that is charged to you on an annual basis to borrow someone else's money. You are paying rent on their money. And that interest rate is what most people look at. Now I'm here to tell you because I own a mortgage company, this is the one that everybody's trained to look at because they just parrot what other people say, well, the interest rate's high. The interest, that's not always the be all end all. And I'll get off my soapbox for that from here on out. The interest rate is just the amount of money that you are borrowing to borrow someone's money. So let's do a, an example to see if we can do this. And a lot of times there's some easy math calculation. So if I borrow, $150,000 at 6% interest rate. How much money am I going to pay in interest that year? Real simple calculation. 1550,000 times 0.6% is what? 0 0.06 means I am going to pay back or I'm going to pay an extra $9,000 in interest that month. So when you read the question, make sure that you see, is it 
inter the word interest rate or the amount of interest. The amount of interest is expressed in dollars on an annual basis and the interest rate is the percentage. And these are always calculated on an annual basis, 6% per year, all right? And I will pay that 6% per year, every year for 30 years because it's a fixed rate, okay? So year one, I might pay nine grand. That is the first thing that you will sign. That is the first document called the IOU or the promissory note. And it is a negotiable instrument, meaning it can be bought and sold.